Does that work? It's cool. Um, it's good to be here. Uh, so today I'm going to chat a little bit about, uh, you know, I'm sure some of you have heard of Kubernetes uh, before. Has, yes, is, that a, is that a yes? People have heard, yay. How many people have heard of the CNCF? Oh, it's better than I expected because most people just have heard of Kubernetes but have no idea what the uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation is. So, um, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll give a brief intro on myself. Um, I've been heavily involved with open source for just about two decades now. Um, currently, I have the fun job of uh, serving as the CTO for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and also the Executive Director of the Open Container Initiative, which is all about building container standards. And also, I serve as a VP at the, at the Linux Foundation. But in a previous life, um, I spent about five years uh, running open source um, at Twitter, uh, started an open source company way back in the day around Eclipse when uh, people liked you know, developer tooling, at least back in the day. Uh, spent time committing on the Gentoo and Fedora Linux projects and wrote a lot of JVM stuff back at, back at IBM. But that's who I am. I've um, been heavily involved in the open source for a while, so i um, currently enjoying now building out the cloud native ecosystem. So um, I will pre prefix something before I start. Is, uh, so I do work for you know, CNCF, but CNCF is part of the Linux Foundation family of foundations, for lack of a better word. A lot of people don't realize that the LF is more than just Linux. Uh, you know, uh, how many of you have heard of Let's Encrypt? Yeah, right? How many did you realize Let's Encrypt is actually part of the Linux Foundation? It's like no one, maybe maybe one or two. But, you know, we're essentially a, a group of efforts that span things from like automotive to cloud, which, which I help run. So I just wanted to prefix uh, that before I get started. So um, CNCF is not that old. It's only a couple, you know, two and, two and a half years old since I helped start the foundation. And it's been kind of a crazy two years for me because it's just been growing a lot faster than I expected. This is kind of a little diagram that shows, you know, when we kind of started the foundation in late 2015 or January 2016, uh, not many people have heard or even, you know, knew about Kubernetes, and then it kind of took off, um, you know, like a rocket ship compared to some of the other competing technologies out there. Um, also, I had the role of being involved in, I don't know how many people remember, like, the, the container wars, but uh, essentially there was a lot of threats of, you know, hey, we're going to fork Docker and so on. And so, um, you know, we helped kind of stabilize that uh, with the Open Container Initiative. But it's been an, essentially a crazy uh, two, you know, two years or so um, helping, helping build these ecosystems. So I'll give people a little history of kind of what Cloud Native is. People get a little bit confused on, um, you know, what, what, what kind of technology you're trying to build. But if you, if you kind of like go back to the early 2000s, maybe late 90s, it was very common for people to buy not necessarily mainframe, but you would buy like a spark box from Sun, right? And then you would like run your application on it and, and kind of be happy. But it was generally a very single vendor uh, approach. You know, you'd run an app, runs on a single machine or big mainframe type thing. Um, essentially, it was non-virtualized. Uh, VMware then came around in uh, early 2000s and popularized the notion of a virtual machine. So now you could stuff a lot of VMs you know, on one box, great. You're utilizing more of the hardware. Everyone's happy. You could even run different operating systems. Uh, eventually, AWS came around and popularized the notion of infrastructure as a service when they launched, um, you know, uh, EC2 and S3 and, and all that jazz. Um, Heroku uh, came around and popularized the notion of platform as a service, right? So you could, you know, beautifully, uh, you, know, pa you know, get your application, get the associated build pack, get push, uh, magically launches. Um, then kind of the open source version of these things started to come along. So uh, OpenStack to help pioneer the notion of a, like, open source infrastructure as a service, which was super cool. Um, Cloud Foundry went and pi pioneered an open source pass. It was kind of the first major open source pass. Uh, great set of technology. And then, uh, you know, for, you know, people weren't aware, containers as a concept have kind of existed for quite a while. Um, but it wasn't really until Docker came along in 2013 that they really popularized the notion of, of containers. And I think a lot of that uh, came to, um, they were able to provide a great experiences for developers. So they had the Docker registry, which was super easy to like package and share things. And they essentially took you know, it r really things took off after that point. Uh, CNCF was really founded in kind of late 2015, 2016 to kind of help bring together these technologies um, kind of under one neutral uh, foundation. But if you kind of look at the history of this, the, the cool thing um, about it is we've, we started in an environment that was very 
single vendor, everything was a kind of a closed ecosystem. And over time, the, the arch of time, you know, since open source has gotten popular, is we've moved to multiple vendor, multiple, you know, kind of implementation ecosystems. So, um, you know, there's a lot of vendors collaborating on these open source things, and it's all done in the open, which um, to me is kind of cool to see over time. And I think we're going to continue to see that trend happen in, in other kind of verticals, not only just, just cloud computing. So, what exactly is a CNCF? You know, we're founded in late 2015. Uh, you know, the funny story of kind of how I started the job is, you know, I spent five years uh, at Twitter, kind of focused on their open source efforts, uh, particularly around the infrastructure. We were running containers at Twitter before they were even cool, uh, or even people called them kind of containers. So I had a lot of experience. And what happened was Google open source Kubernetes, and they're like, hey, we want to build. Um, you know, a foundation around this. We don't want to be the full, we don't want to own the full thing because they realized if, if, if Kubernetes was going to be successful, it cannot just be perceived as Google controlled. They need to, you know, open it up, make sure it's neutral, you know, put the copyright IP in a foundation and, and get other companies to contribute. So we did that. And so for me, you know, after I quit Twitter, I was going to go like, you know, travel the world for about a month and kind of just take time off after that crazy experience. But eventually I got a ping um, from the friends at the Linux Foundation like, hey, Google wants to build this crazy foundation. Do you want to do it? I'm like, sure. I've always wanted to try to build an open source foundation from scratch. So why not? Um, it was a fun experience. Um, essentially, CNCF it could be thought of something like the Apache Foundation where, you know, but we're essentially a collection of open source projects, but it is a very set of high quality curated cloud native projects. And, and when I say cloud native, it has to do essentially something with containers, orchestra, Ooh, it's getting a little, I wonder if it's my phone. I will turn this off, sorry. Let me see, it could be my phone or it could be the, the settings. But. So, you know, like I mentioned, like CNCF, we're, we're there to kind of curate a highly, uh, highly quali high quality set of projects um, that are useful for folks. So, um, you know, uh, and our goal is, you know, you're never going to be able to, to necessarily download like a Kubernetes distro from the CNCF website or any distro for our projects. We essentially want to allow our member companies to build cool distros, products, and so on. So that's kind of how we operate, which is kind of similar like the, to the Apache Foundation. So, you know, like I mentioned, we're, we're, we're essentially a community of open infrastructure projects. Obviously, Kubernetes is our big one, but I'm sure some of you, if you're using Kubernetes already, you probably have dabbled with Prometheus somewhere in there, right? Because you're essentially wanting to monitor your cluster. Uh, some of you have may even, you know, wrote services that use gRPC. Um, so we have a collection of these projects that are independently useful on their own. Um, but, you know, work really great if you combine them together uh, in, in various ways. But we essentially don't force any of this integration. We have a variety of members that are part of CNCF. Um, one of the cool things, at least from my perspective, that for the last two and a half years, I've been trying to essentially get all the cloud providers kind of working together in like a neutral setting. And so, I, you know, for like, I think the first time in history in like open source land, we have all the kind of top six or even top 10 cloud providers in the world from like Alibaba at AWS, all working together in, in the foundation to kind of, um, you know, collaborate and, and move the state of cloud native forward. Um, so, you know, Kubernetes, everyone's excited about it, finally, after all this time. Um, what, what is everyone exactly necessarily excited about? Well, for people that aren't aware, um, Kubernetes is kind of a weird term, but um, essentially it's Greek for, you know, pilot of a ship, essentially, or pilot. So, you know, essentially, you know, the original idea behind the name, depending if you talk to some of the uh, original people associated with the pro projects like Brendan Burns, essentially, you know, it was always meant to kind of represent you know, uh, essentially a, a pilot of a set of like applications or containers running in production. So that's kind of where the, where the name came from. But, um, you know, w one unique aspect of, of Kubernetes has been just kind of how fast um, the, the project has been being developed. Um, we have this kind of cool, uh, you know, open source project that we developed to kind of track the velocity of how, you know, fast projects are being developed. If you go to GitHub, dot com slash CNCF velocity, you kind of generate these charts on your own. But 
Um, it's, it's logarithmic, which is, could be a little bit confusing for folks, but uh, Kubernetes essentially ranks number two behind uh, the kernel in terms of like velocity of um, issues, pull requests, contributions being um, handled. So it's kind of unique in that regard, and uh, you know, it's always interesting to see uh, some of the other projects here. Uh, if you look at like others, oh, React, there's also Homebrew, so it's crazy to see how things have um, uh, evolved in terms of how fast things are going, which by the way, like completely makes managing stuff on GitHub uh, a, a huge pain in the ass. Um, we, we wrote some cool tools, but I could talk about that like hallway track or something later if people are interested. Um, so what does Kubernetes actually do? You know, why is it so popular? It, it really kind of solves the problem of, you know, um, it abstracts away kind of the underlying hardware and resources associated with running, you know, software. Um, you know, it basically, you know, I don't like the pets and cattle analogy, but essentially it, it, it really makes, you know, makes it generic in a way where you don't have to worry about necessarily machines. You're essentially writing a service that, you know, has these dependencies and so on, and it kind of handles the distribution for you. You know, the kind of the best analogy I like to use is uh, some people may be familiar with POSIX, but, you know, in the way POSIX essentially allows you to write, you know, you know a script that will work across different, you know, OSs in, in some ways, Kubernetes kind of does the, the same concept for distributed um, applications. And, um, you know, under the covers, um, you know, I kind of like to use the analogy, well, this may not be the best one, but like, you know, Git, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure, banged their head when they were first starting to learn Git, right? Like, oh, it's a little bit confusing. But under the covers, Git is actually fairly simple, right? There's only like a, you know, a handful of object types, right? You know, there's trees, you know, um, you know, blobs and so on. Kubernetes is pretty similar in, uh, I think the learning curve is a little bit steep, but under the covers, um, you know, there's a kind of a fairly somewhat simple, you know, object model. You know, there's pods that essentially, you know, serve as like the basic building block uh, for, for Kubernetes. Um, there's deployments, which, you know, how do you actually deploy things? Uh, pods could have services, and there's kind of namespace in terms of how you categorize things. And a lot of tools are built, you know, um, you know kind of using these concepts uh, from Kubernetes. The same way, like, Git, if you look at kind of, you know, all the Git, you know, different command line options and tools out there, um, the porcelain commands are all kind of built off those, like, four for objects, kind of the same principle here, I think, applies for Kubernetes. So um, it is a bit of a steep learning curve, but once you get it, you're like, okay, kind of, kind of makes sense. Um, um, you know, what are some unique features of Kubernetes? Why are people using it? Um, you know, uh, so you know, obviously, the whole like, uh, you know, self-healing automatically schedules, uh, automatically scheduling of like containers if some, like something like a service goes down. It's like a huge um, aspect for Kubernetes. The kind of uh, bin packing of, uh, hey, I want more services to run on a machine and utilize more resources is a, huge, um, is a huge driving requirement. I mean, it's one of the reasons you look at kind of the large internet scale companies out there like, you know, Google, Twitter, Facebook, they're, they're all doing the same thing of basically trying to cram as much, you know, software um, on each machine to be able to utilize all that hardware because if you're, you know, running this stuff at scale and you're only using you know, 60% of your CPU or, you know, 20% of your RAM, that's a lot of wasted money, especially if you have support, you know, hundreds of millions or billions of users. So um, that's why people are doing it. You kind of have the auto, auto, auto scaling, rollout features, uh, and, and so on. So it's kind of basically everything you need to, to kind of really build um, distributed applications. Um, you know, the, the other thing I'll say is uh, there are other talks Today, uh, I saw that people are doing like Kubernetes tutorials and other things, so I highly recommend attending those sessions if you kind of want to get a quick, um, easy start uh, with, with Kubernetes. Um, how does the actual development um, work inside the Kubernetes community? Um, easiest way I could explain this is, uh, you know, Kubernetes is kind of uh, broken apart into what they call special interest groups. So um, if you wanted to say, hey, I want to contribute to the networking features in, in Kubernetes, you would join the networking special interest group. And, you know, that's kind of how they participate things. So they kind of try to, you know, spread out the work of, you know, focusing on specific aspects of Kubernetes and leave that, you know, leave it to the special interest group to control those specific things in part of the Kubernetes repo. So there's interest groups for all sorts of different aspects. So um, this is generally, you know, how you would necessarily get involved if you were interested in contributing to, uh, to Kubernetes. Pick your special interest group and go um, from there. As I mentioned before, there are kind of uh, talks later in the day that people are doing tutorials, but if you kind of want to get with uh, get involved with 
Kubernetes and learn how to play with it. Um, I generally recommend people start with Minikube. It's a super easy way to kind of just get a Kubernetes cluster working on your laptop. Um, you know, the other thing to note is almost all, like basically the major cloud providers all do kind of like a, like a Kubernetes as a service or managed Kubernetes offering, so you could start there, but Minikube makes it super easy to get things working um, uh, on, your, on your laptop. Um, if you're interested in contributing to um, you know, the Kubernetes and CNCF community, we are participating in Summer of Code right now, so um, you know, if you happen to be a student and you're interested in contributing to one of our projects, uh, go to github.com slash cncf slash soc, and there's a bunch of um, project um, ideas uh, there. So, the other thing I'd like to say, like we, we, we are more than just one project. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're just like the Kubernetes Foundation, but like, no, there's a bunch of other you know projects that are, you know, super useful uh, in, in in CNCF. And so, what we've done is try to build some tools to help people kind of, you know, see the landscape for for lack of a better word out there. So, um, I don't know how many people have seen this diagram, but you know, there's a lot of uh, let's say projects and companies doing quote unquote cloud native things. So we've tried to build this out just to like, we used to track this stuff in like a, like a Google sheet and it was just a nightmare and we're like, well how about we do this like in an open source way where we create a repo and help the community track it for us <laughs> and uh, build this out. And it's been pretty, it's been pretty successful. So uh, people love it and hate it, but it's, it's useful at least for us to show, you know, here are the projects that we have like in like the, you know, networking space or the service management space and here are the different products and projects um, out there. So uh, it's a fun experience, but um, you know, it's, it's useful to kind of see how somewhat sometimes complicated this stuff is. Uh, what's really cool recently is um, we created kind of an interactive version of this. So I don't know how many uh, of you have seen this, but if you go to l.cncf.io, you could essentially filter and search for things. So you could, for example, let me see if I could find this. Do, 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 do. I just opened it up. Let me go find it. Well, let's see, I'll just go back later. But um, essentially you could filter by like, hey, I want to see all the projects that are like in China or something like that, right? So you could totally um, do that. Um, we're also doing some interesting things in serverless. So like sometimes our landscapes kind of dive down into like storage or networking related things. So if you go to s.cncf.io, you could actually go see like, here's like all the crazy like serverless projects out there that people are building um, either on top of Kubernetes or um, on other kind of um, cloud-based systems. Um, let's see, where am I? Trail map. Um, so uh, another interesting concept is when when, when people are, are essentially moving to, um, you know, to take advantage of Kubernetes or moving to cloud native, uh, there's usually a lot of confusion in terms of like, where do I begin? How do I start? Which projects to use? Uh, so we heard a lot of complaints out there and we're like, well, you know, when, we, you know, when I was younger, we used to kind of have like these, like, you could have like a little trail map, right? And kind of follow along. And so like, we try to do something, we try to kind of take that concept and apply it to cloud native. So we've built this to basically, you know, show that there are many ways and paths to kind of becoming, you know, cloud native. And for some people, that may generally start with containerizing your applications. Um, for some people, it could be, you know, you already have CI CD set up, so you could start there. Um, you know, eventually you get to orchestration and, oh, I need to be able to observe everything within my um, clusters. And here are some useful projects. So we essentially created this as a fun little diagram slash tool to kind of help people along uh, along their journey. So whether it's useful or not, I don't know, but we were trying to kind of simplify things um, uh, for folks. So there's kind of a full journey that kind of goes through in terms of our opinion of what, what people would take advantage of as they be kind of become uh, more cloud native. So uh, feel free to take um, a look at it. It's, it's all online, so you could you know, contribute to it. You know, pull request issues are always uh, hopeful uh, and, and, and welcome. So. Um, I kind of will wrap things up and uh, hopefully leave some uh, time for questions because that's always more fun. So um, to kind of wrap things up, uh, so uh, a couple trends, you know, that I want to kind of mention before I kind of, you know, end things uh, speaking about like where I think uh, cloud native is going is open source is super um, popular. You know, the previous presentation, um, you know, there's so she was mentioning like the three kind of distinct phases of open source and, you know, things are going on like, you know, it, it's, it's actually crazy to see like almost, you know, if you have a TV at home, there's a huge chance that it's using like open source software, right? Everyone has phones, you know, even your Apple 
phone that has open source on it. Android is essentially Linux, you know, with some stuff on it. Cars are shipping open source software. So, um, you know, it's, we're going to see open source to be prevalent, you know, all, all around us. And you know, I think this trend will, you know, continue. There's, there's some studies out there that have been done um, where it says like, oh, 78% of companies are using open source. I think that number is much higher. I think they just, like companies just aren't, aren't aware they're using open source. But the cool thing here is I think um, 63, it says 63% 63, 63 of companies are starting to participate and actively contribute to open source, which I think is important because, uh, you know, open source is only sustainable if people actually contribute and give back. So seeing companies do this, whether it's like actually contributing patches or financially, fiscally supporting projects they depend on and communities they depend on is, is, is clutch. The other kind of trend um, and kind of where CNCF came, came from is um, a lot of the inter internet scale companies out there like Twitter, Google, Facebook has, have basically open sourced a lot of how they do their infrastructure, right? You know, TensorFlow, that's basically how, you know, Google's, you know, handling AI. Netflix is basically, we're going to open source everything in terms of how we run uh, because at the end of the day, uh, you know, we make money by letting people watch movies and TV shows and so on. We're not a software shop. We don't sell licenses to software, so we're going to open source all the infrastructure so people could help us um, uh, to make a better, better service. So, um, you know, the, the, this has been happening for the last, you know, you know probably several or five five plus years now um, and I think this trend will continue uh, to happen and so what essentially it is it is being paired with the trend that more and more companies are essentially using open source and becoming software companies so folks like Mercedes-Benz and Daimler are you know all of a sudden trying to figure out you know how to scale their infrastructure because like, inside each car you know is potentially running Linux with open source software that connects to some cloud that stores, you know, information and has some type of experience. So um, what they're going to do is essentially copy or learn from how these original internet scale companies did it because, you know, Twitter and Facebook, Google, they all have to figure out how do you support a billion users, right? So you'll see this trend of other companies out there that are becoming more software related kind of use tools like Kubernetes and TensorFlow to uh, benefit um, from their own. So. Um, so that's basically kind of the you know trends here. I think you know as more and more companies become software companies, they're going to use tools like Kubernetes, TensorFlow to take advantage of uh, kind of the work that has been done before. So um, a couple of resources to share before I open in questions. Um, we have three big events uh, in the Kubernetes and cloud native community. Um, we have one in Europe coming up in Copenhagen. That's about a month, a little over a month away. Um, we're doing our first event in China, which is great. It's our kind of first event in Asia. It's in Shanghai in November. Uh, see how that goes. It's going to be interesting. Um, and, and then we kind of have our banner event in North America in Seattle in December this year. So, um, you know, one important thing is uh, we do a ton of uh, scholarships for our conferences. So if some of you are students or, you know, or essentially could qualify for a diversity scholarship, I recommend you apply. Um, we sent at the last, uh, at the last KubeCon we had in North America in December, we had about 120 or so uh, diversity scholarship recipients and we spent you know, a quarter million dollars in bringing them. We've raised a lot of money to do that and it's something we're proud of. So uh, please apply. We'd love to see some of you at um, our, our event. And then other than that, these are just like random links that you could click on to learn a little bit more about uh, the Kubernetes and CNCF communities. So don't know how I'm doing on time, but uh, you know, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, you know, with all my talks, you know, if you learn something new, I'm, I'm very happy. So um, hopefully you did. Uh, if you need any um, help with, you know, Kubernetes or, you know, any CNCF related thing, please feel free to shoot me an email or tweet. I'd love to kind of learn um, if you're using any of these technologies. And if you want to get involved in our communities, I'm more than happy to, to take the time to, to lead you through that. So thank you again, and hope you learned something new. Thanks, Chris. Uh, don't, don't, don't go away. Um,